Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Saratoga Racecourse here on Saturday. It is the 26th of August, 2023. It's Travers Day from Saratoga, and I'm going to look at the Travers and all the other stakes races on the program. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at HorseRacingKid5 for more selections for racecourses around the world. And I mean around the world. Some good racing today um, with the St. Louis Derby also, uh, so check out that preview. And also you have some good races from York today. And tomorrow, of course, you have the um, uh, some, the final weekend of the the year from Dovio with the big races there uh, in France. So I hope you check out that preview. But it's Travers Day. These stakes races look very nice. We're going to look at them right now. Races um, 7 and then 9, 10, 11, and 12. So six races to look at. Let's get to it right now. It's going to be five races to look at. I can't count. Let's get to the seventh race. First stakes race of the afternoon. It is the Forgo Stakes. It's a grade one event going for a half a million dollar purse. Race for four-year-olds and upwards field of five horses but it's a good quality group of five horses going the distance of ground of 1400 meters or seven furlongs in this year's forego I'm gonna take the tours gun it as a top selection i'm gonna go two three five four in the superfecta two three five four super top selection of tours good night this four-year-old cult by gun runner steve asmussen trains tyler gaff the own gets the mount the horse's most recent outing came 29th of july here at saratoga on the slop six furlongs in the alfred vanderbilt handicap and the horse from the second by ahead elite power freak that day closed up from nowhere this horse looked like a winner in the top of the lane but then he just got caught what can you do he ran his heart out that day uh, in that run. Coming here to seven furlongs, hopefully he can slow it down a little bit on the front end. I think, you know, off of uh, off of that last run, he, he can win here and, and get the good trip to win. Um, he likes his track. He hasn't won on it quite often, but when he runs here, he always runs these game on races. Two back, he went third in June at Churchill, six furlongs in the Arsidiety Stakes, and he won by one three-quarter lengths that day, and he sat back early, a little bit wide, but when he got the turn of foot, he kept going with a 108 career co-career best buyer. Another very good run for him there, and then he ran at Dubai at Maidan, six furlongs in the Group 1 Golden Jaheen. He finished third by a half a length that day. He was really closing up well late. The winner, Sibelius, and, and the second-place finisher, Switzerland, who was a Golden Jaheen winner quite a few years ago, ran a little bit better races than him, but he ran his heart out that day, and then the Riyadh uh, Dirt Sprint in Saudi Arabia over the six. He finished second by three and a quarter lengths. Elite Power, you know, had a great race that day. This horse, you know, he, he just couldn't catch the winner, which was just a little bit better. But I do think coming to the seven prong should suit him well. Um, back to Saratoga, I'm going to give him a massive shot on the ticket. Um, it seems like he's been the bridesmaid here uh, as of recently, just not the bride. I think he can get to the other side of Elite Power. But Elite Power can win also. Um, he's a winner of his last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a lot. He, you know, he, he's won eight in a row now. I think He's going for nine, uh, but he, he won the Vanderbilt closing up for nowhere with a career best one away buyer. On the true north of Belmont on Belmont Stakes Eve going six and a half. He um, he uh, won by one three quarter lengths going away, and then he won in Saudi Arabia quite nicely. Won, of course, winning the Breeders' Cup Turf sp uh, Sprint at Keenan last year quite nicely. He's been on the improve. Um, you know, he's the horse to beat, um, you know, but I think, uh, you know, Gunite could really. Um, you know, have a jump on him late. Um, uh, but uh, like I said, he, he's, he's been a great horse, um, you know, very consistent. So, um, you know, like I said, the pick six begins with this race. Go too deep here. I think it's a two-horse race between those two. But to recap my selection for the seven from Saratoga now, it's the grade one four go. Going to take the two-horse good night. Give kudos to the three-horse elite power. Two, three, five, four, super. Two, three in your multi-race. Let's head over to race number nine from Saratoga, which is the H. Allen Jerkins Memorial. It's a grade one event going for a $500,000 purse race for three-year-olds here. We have a field of six horses, but again, good group of six horses going 1,400 meters or seven furlongs on the main track. I'm going to take the six-horse Arabian Lion as a top selection. Let's go 6-4-3-5 in the Superfecta. 6-4-3-5 Super. Top selection, six-horse Elite Power. Uh, excuse me, Elite Power. The six-horse Arabian Lion, this um, three-year-old Colt by Justify. Bob Baffert trains. John Velasquez gets to mount. The horse's most recent out came 10th of June at Belmont, seven furlongs in the grade one Woody Stevens, and the horse went by one and three quarter lengths that day, and he stalked a quick pace up front. When he got to the front end, he quickened up, and then he went away with it. That was a very good run. I do think his better trip was around the one turn seven, even probably one turn mile should suit him well also, but cutting back here off the bench, training well at Del Mar, I think this horse could really get a good race and win here today, and I think you'll see a speed duel up front that could set up for this horse. Two back, he ran the Sir Barton around two turns of Pimlico, mile 16th, 20th of May, and he won by four that day, and, you know, he had very easy fractions on the front end. He get out of the gate so clearly, but basically he walked on the front end, quickened up nicely, 
an all-around good race with a 103 buyer, and then they ran him in the Lexington before that Keeneland, a mile 16th, 15th of April. Not Irad's best ride. He finished second by a half a length that day. He was with them early. He was setting the pace early on from Y Post and then he just kind of went out late um, in the top of lane. It looked like he wanted to hurt another horse who outsmarted him. And uh, you know, I think that cost him probably the victory that day. Like I said, not, I wouldn't put that one on the uh, the highlight reel. Uh, and then the Robert B. Lewis Santinito over the mile sixteenth. He finished fourth by five and a quarter lengths that day. And then he just kind of hit the wall that day from, from setting the pace. Uh, but he's really improved a lot. Like I said, I do think his better trips around a one turn mile or seven furlongs like he's seen today he could win i think the the four horse fort bragg the other baffert could win also um another horse he's been dying out for some you know not a routed trip he wants to go one turn um you know finally got the one turn two back in the um in the pante mile where he ran a massive second by a neck behind general jim general jim caught him that day but this horse he ran as hard out that day came back to win the dwyer on the first line a very incredible race with saudi crown who ran a little disappointed around two turns afterwards but uh, they were gaming it out to the wire, flying on the front end. He got the nose in front with a 106 buyer. That was a very good run, even after not getting out of the gate so clearly. But like I said, I think since coming back to a one-turn mile or seven furlongs, he's become a great horse. He has some speed. He could definitely win. I know he's 5-2, but I'm going to use him on the uh, pick four ticket that begins with this race. But to recount my selection for the ninth from Saratoga, it's the H. Allen Jerkins Memorial. Going to take the six horse. Arabian Lion, give kudos to the four horse Fort Bragg, six four three five super, six four in your multi race. The tenth event now from Saratoga. It is the Ballerina Handicap. It's a Grade One event going for a five hundred thousand dollar purse race. Phillies mares, three year olds and upwards. We have a field of eight horses going fourteen hundred meters or seven furlongs on the main track. So that seven furlong uh, starting position is going to get quite used today. My top selection. I'm going to take the two horse Matreya. I'm going to go two six seven eight in the Superfecta. Two six seven eight super top selection. Two horse Matreya. This four year old filly by Pioneer of the Nile. Bob um, Bradcox trains this one for Godolphin. Flavian Pratt gets the mount. They ran the horse at Ellis most recently on the 24th of June. Six furlongs in the Chicago Stakes. Um, and that Chicago Stakes or Handicap, whatever it is now, um, has been run at three different courses now in the last three years or so. It's been run at Arlington. Churchill and now Ellis. Where will it be run next year? Maybe Colonial, never know. But um, the Chicago Stakes last time out, he finished third by 12 lengths that day, and he just kind of stalked. And the two in front of him really took off clear. That track was very speed favoring at Ellis the early on during the meeting, kind of slowed down a little bit towards the end now. But, um, you know, you had to be absolutely on the front end to win. This horse, he just couldn't keep up late. Cutting back to um, coming here to Saratoga today, where he's, she ran okay last season. I think she could get a better trip to win. She ran terrifically in the Derby City Distaff at uh, Churchill, 7th from 6th of May. Winning by a length that day from a tracking trip. She got to the front end. She quickened up nicely. And she beat home a Breers Cup winner, um, Goodnight Olive, that day. That was a very good, strong performance for her there. And then the matron at Oaklawn on the mud, going 6 on the 31st of March. She finished second by three quarters length. She got caught late. She was dueling on the front end. He, she had to lead by a lot, but then she got caught by Wick at Halo. First off the bench, probably neither race, but she, again, not a bad race for her there. And then the test at Saratoga last summer over the seven furlongs. She finished third by one three quarter lengths. You know, she was just a little bit wide, a little bit of a trouble trip, and you know, that cost her, but she didn't run half bad. And then last year's acorn over the mile, Belmont, winning by six and a quarter lengths. She had everything her own way on the front end, and she went away with it. Won the eight bells before that, won the Belmont before that. You know, if there's something I could criticize, she hasn't hit a triple digit buyer yet. Not a lot of these horses have, but, um, you know, the way she runs, she, she I would have thought she um, she would have had a triple-digit buyer, but she hasn't shown one yet. But she could definitely win against these horses. I think the, the race should suit up for her well from a tracking trip. I'm going to use her. I think the six-horse Echo Zulu is your, your most likely winner also. Um, you know, came back with a 112 buyer last time out, going three quarters in the um, Honorable Miss. She only had three other rivals, but one by seven and a quarter length. She drove off clear on the front end. Prior to them, the winning color, she won by five and a quarter. Again, off the bench, a very good run. She ran disappointingly from a wide poster in the rear. Cup Philly Mayor Sprint last year, uh, but won the Dogwood before that. Um, you know, their only races she really doesn't do well in are those two turn races. I do think she's a better horse around a one turn coming here today. She can win. And don't throw out the Brewers Cup champion, the seven horse Goodnight Olive. Hasn't been seen since the Better Roses, where she nearly won that day um, by a small margin. She was just a little bit wide, and it, it took her a little bit of time to get going, but she gamed it out to the wire. Prior to that, the Derby City Distaff, she just never was really comfortable. She had a trouble trip on the inside, which cost her. 
great ride by uh, Gaffney on that day, by the way. Um, and then the Madison Akeelan over the seven. She won by a length, and from a tracking trip, she really took off clear. She likes this track. She's two for two on it, winning an allowance race last summer and winning the Ballerina here last summer again with a 102 buyer. You know, she could definitely win also, but her buyers have slightly been going backwards, I've noticed. But, um, you know, I, I do prefer the other two, but she can win also. Um, definitely using the pick four. But to recount my selection for this 10th from Saratoga now, it's the Ballerina Handicap. Going to take the two horse Matreya. Give kudos to the six horse Echo Zulu and the seven horse Good Night Olive. Two, six, seven, eight, two, six, seven, eight, super. Two, six, seven in your multi race. There we go. Let's get to the 11th race from Saratoga, the feature turf race of the summer. It is a Sword Dancer Invitational. It's a grade one event going for $750,000 purse race for four-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of seven horses entered to go 2,400 meters or a mile and one half on the Saratoga inner turf course. Um, some rain in the forecast um, late Friday into Saturday. So, uh, and the you know, the rain has been the theme for the Saratoga meeting, it seems, for the last month or so now. But, um, you, you know, They'll, they'll run this race on the turf. Maybe some of the undercard races will get taken off, but uh, these turf courses, they've been getting a beating, but, uh, you know, we're slowly getting through the meet. Um, but um, my top selection of the Sword Dancer, I'm going to go with Three Horse Bolchois Ballet. I'm going to go 3761 in the Super Factor. 3761 Super. Top selection Three Horse Bolchois Ballet. Five Year Old Horse by Galileo. Ain't no Brian Trains. John Velasquez gets to mount. The horse's most recent appearance came at Ascot on the 29th of July. A mile and a half in the King George. The group won King George, and he finished six by 21 and a quarter lengths that day. You know, he, he just not a group one horse in the UK. You know, he, he just never was really comfortable, and he just, you know, when he's run against those tough horses, he's not showing up. The turf division in this country this year has been very, over the mile and a half older horse division, has been very subpar. Last few seasons it has. Um, I think this horse coming from the UK, he's, he's not keeping up with those good horses there, but coming to this side of the pond, where the turf, turf division is less than stellar, I think he has the ability and he's run races fast enough in Europe to win against these horses and get a good trip to win. The race in the Wolferton over the mile and a quarter at Royal Ascot, he could win he, he could win against these horses there. He was seven to one. He finished second by one and a quarter lengths. He just stalked. He couldn't get the um jump late, but he got around the race course well. Not a bad race for this horse there. And then the group three Al Rayane over the mile and a half at Newberry in May. He finished third by ahead that day and he just kinda stalked again. He couldn't get there late, but he ran his heart out. And then off the bench he probably needed the race in the vintage crop at Navin, where he finished third by eight lengths. He just kinda hit the wall, a little lack of days goal. But he, he, they, last year they ran him um, only once in the uh, at in the Churchill Stakes at Lingfield in um, just regular listed stakes. We finished fourth, need the race there. And then if you look at his 2021 campaign, he was a you know he, he liked running uh, on the side of the pond. He actually ran in the uh, Saratoga Derby of 2021, um, be, getting beat by State of Rest. Went on to win the um, Cox Plate, basically the Australian equivalent of like the British Cup Classic. Um, came back to run a fourth in the Jock Club Derby behind your beer, who went on to win the Breeders' Cup turf, beating this horse that day at uh, Del Mar, where he had a stupidly wide post draw. But he has a winner on this side of the pond. He won the Belmont Derby in 2021 going away by one quarter lengths from a great ride by Ryan Moore that day. Uh, but um, he hasn't found the winner's circle since then. But he's been facing two tough competition in Europe. Coming here today, a little lesser quality horses. I think a 5-1, to one, he's very loaded. I love the price on him. I think his second likeliest winner is the um, seven horse here, former, former um, uh, O'Brien horse, now with Chad Brown, uh, Stone Age, Flavian Pratt's on this one, uh, but hasn't been seen since um, Doha in, uh, in in Qatar back in February. That came over the mile and a half in the uh, um, Group 1 Amir Trophy, where he finished 12th by 12 and a quarter lengths that day and just absolutely showed nothing. Absolutely nothing. Needed the race that day. Before then, the Hong Kong Vaz, he just kind of stalked, never getting the good turn of, turn of foot, but ran a massive second in the Brewers Cup turf after that, or before that, um, behind Rebels Romance, again, not the world's toughest um, British Cup turf we've ever had against, you know, even the European contingency that day wasn't um, up to par, but she just, he kind of stalked and he had a good turn of foot, but Rebels Romance for Godolphin really quick and up easily, uh, and then they ran in the in the um, champion stakes, where he got beat by much better horses. I do think his trip's better over the mile and a half. Another horse, he's proven he can run decent races on this side of the pond. I'll give him a shot here um, on the ticket, and even, you know, watch out for the old man, um, the six-horse channel maker. Will he kind of run like... Um, 
like John's call, um, you know, he, he won the Bowling Green a few weeks ago quite nicely, um, and uh, he always runs these sneaky good races, and he's going to be on the front end. It wouldn't surprise me if Manny tries to steal it on the front end. Um, he went 116 to three quarters, which won it for him last time out on the soft going. But coming here, he could definitely win. I would use him on the ticket, but I do th- think the other two horses are slightly classier and a little bit more, have, have a little bit more agility uh, with their young age than this one. But it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up in the winner's circle. Let's use him in this pick four. But to recap my selection for the 11th from Saratoga now, it is a sword dancer, the grade one $750,000 sword dancer. Going to take the three-horse Bolshaw Ballet, give kudos to the seven-horse Stone Age and the six-horse Channel Maker, 3761 Super, 376 in your multi-race. Let's get the featured 12th race now from the spa, which is the Traverse Stakes. It's a grade one event going for a $1.25 million purse. Race for three-year-olds here. Seven horses are entered, but if you talk about, you know, good quality horses, this is good quality, proper grade one horses. Seven of them going to 2,000 meter journey or a mile and a quarter on the Saratoga main track. I love the one horse forte in the spot. I'm going to go one, two, six, seven in the Superfecta. One two six seven super top selection to one horse forte. This three year cult by violence here. Top Pletcher trains this one. I Radatis Jr. gets the mount. Most recently off the bench in the Jim Dandy at Saratoga on the slab, mile eighth, twenty ninth of July. He won by nose that day. I do think he should have got taken down that day. He just kind of stalked. He came out in the lane a couple per- paths that day. He got the job done. You know, they had the blinkers on for the first time, which really, you know, he, he just kept going. He, he didn't stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. He, he got there in the nick of time. Like I said, should have probably been disqualified, but he ran his heart out finally with a 105 buyer. Prior to that, he ran terrifically in the Belmont Stakes. He wasn't going to win. He was passing slightly tiring horses late over the mile and a half, but off the bench, he finished second by one and a quarter lengths. It was kind of stop and go, stop and go a little bit wide, but he ran his heart out that day behind Archangelo, and then the Florida Derby at Goldstream with the mile and the eighth, drawn 11 to 12. He won by a length, but he needed the blinkers that day. If you would have told me at uh, three eights from home he was going to win, I would said, no, you're nuts. But, um, you know, he's just very, very lax the days go from the back pack early on. He slowly moved his way into it. It looked like he was going to stop in, in, the, in the turn, but then, he, you know, I had to do, really use him a lot that day to get into the race, and then he got the job done. A very good run from there, and then they found a youth over the mile in the 16th at Goldstream. Went by four and a quarter lengths again. Probably his best race lifetime um, up until that point, uh, or up until the uh, Jim Dandy, I shall I say. Um, he, he, he didn't get out of the gate so clearly. He was a little bit wide, but he had to be used a lot that day, but he went away with it. A very good, strong run. When the Breeze Cup Juvenile by four that very nicely with a hundred buyer won the Breeders Paturity won the hopeful last summer a disappointing race in the uh, and the Sanford where he just had a very you know and you know wide trip but um you know he, he's really improved a lot he's training well he's bred for the mile and a quarter I think he could get uh you know redemption in the midsummer derby by missing from missing the um the derby earlier this year I'll use him on the ticket the two horse Archangelo uh, he's my second likeliest uh, winner here I'm gonna use him the pick four for Jonah Antonucci and Javier Castellano most recently in the Belmont over the mile and a half you know, I didn't pick him that day, but he ran terrifically. He won by one quarter lengths. He stalked all the way around the race course. He got to the front end, and he grinded it out. That was a very good run. Um, you know, not a bad race at all, uh, especially for a cheap horse. Only bought him for 35000 Um Before I go any further, Forte is a pretty cheap horse also. They only bought him for 110000 So, um, you know, it's not he's not your uh, TF classiest horses winning. Uh, you know, most expensive horses, but they're very classy uh, individuals now. But um, Archangel, terrific in the Belmont. Prior to them, the mile late, Peter Pan, a local prep race for the Belmont. He won by a head that day, and again, he sat back early, a little bit wide, but he grinded it out to the wire. Very good, strong performance. And then the main special weight mid-march at Goldstream over the mile. He won by three and a half lengths again. Then got out of the gate so clearly, very, very wide. But again, he, he's a grinder. He just gets it and goes away with it. I like him over the mile quarter. He's training well since Belmont. I'm going to use him on the ticket. And I think the six-horse disarm getting blinkers on should really run a good race. He ran just not so well on the slop last time out, where he finished fourth by two and a half lengths. Just never was really into it. Prior to then, the Matt, Matt went over the mile and eighth at... Um, at Ellis, he won by a half a length that day, and you need to be on the front end at Ellis early on in June. But this horse, he sat a little bit back that day. He slowly moved his way into it, and he got the job done. A very good, strong performance. And then he ran a sneaky good fourth in the Derby, uh, finishing fourth by four and a half lengths. He wasn't going to win that day. He was way out of it early on, but you know he, he was closing well that day. Very good, sneaky race there. And then they ran him in the Lexington. He needed points to get to the Derby. He finished third. It was an okay run there. And then he ran a very good second in the Louisiana Derby, closing into a very slow pedestrian 
pace that Kings Barons um, ran that day, but he's training well. I think the blinkers on should suit him well. At 8-1, to one, it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up in the winner's circle. A logical um, you know, use in the uh, late pick four here, and this very wide open Traverse. It's very unusual that you see the Derby, <laughs> Preakness, and Belmont winner all in the same race. So, um, you know, this Traverse is going to be one for the ages, I think. Um, but to recap my selections now for the 12th from Saratoga, it's the grade one, $1.25 million Travers. Going to take the one horse Forte as a top selection. Give kudos to the two horse Archangelo and the six horse Disarm. One, two, six, seven, super. One, two, six to end off the pick four. So good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. Good luck, everybody.